Hey folks, it's Mark here, aka Captain DeFi from Oz DeFi and not centralized and just another Web3 opinions thing here. So we're gonna to go to an article that uh, was in The Chainsaw and if you guys don't know about The Chainsaw, it is a new publication that's all about Web3 and it is local. So there's some awesome folks there uh, that are running it and we've been lucky enough to meet some of them at various conventions and meetups. So having a look here at the one that they've got, this was all about uh, the FTX collapse wasn't a crypto problem, it was a centralization problem. So I got to chat with Tom Mitchell Hill, the journalist uh, down in Melbourne to talk about this. And he highlights here, you know, how there was like uh, Voyager, Celsius, BlockFi, all of these uh, entities, including FTX and how the at the core they were centralized exchanges they offered investors the ability to invest in cryptocurrencies but because the exchange holds the keys investors really didn't own them in a real sense so that's uh definitely something worth noting that many people don't uh think about when they look at this space it is all just well it's all crypto not really there are nuances uh to that and then how DeFi is the antidote um so uniswap balance a curve um, or all, all these other ones that are out there. So sushi swipe, Aave, etc. So how they have actually been working um, in the wake of the collapse. So these are designed to reserve the benefits um, by having trustlessness, transparency, and self custody. So something worth looking at there. And then uh, in the next section, we weigh in on some of the stuff that we see are still the core tenets of blockchain. Okay, so picking it up again from uh, part two this time, we're gonna go back to the article and take a look at uh, the next part, which is the core tenets of blockchain that we allude to here in uh, this article, where it's basically these things that have still remained despite the failures of FTX, and it is something that you need to consider. So things like automation, transparency, easier value transfer, security and composability. So let's just go through all of those a little bit quickly. So automation, these smart contracts are there so that you can actually automate work that is being done. Um, so if it is doing uh, some moving of uh, certain tokens around, instead of having to manually do that, there is automation in the smart contracts to do that or to pay different people, etc. The other part here is transparency. And when you consider things like, for example, contracts where you might be in the construction industry if you're a builder and you're waiting to get paid, you've done some work, how do you know that the other side uh, has the funds? So you can more easily than in TradFi set up escrow accounts and have the other side have collateral that they have to show. And unless they show that collateral or show that they have the funds, you can pull up tools and you can just hold up the work and you know not have to go down a further path that may cost you dearly um, and we've seen companies collapse because they didn't know that the other side wasn't able to pay them. On the flip side, you can have the person paying uh, the builders like actually able to uh, control and pause payments if they don't see that the other side is doing the work. So it's something worth having a look at there. So those are two key elements. Um, easier value transfer because we don't have to go through intermediaries for a lot of this kind of stuff. Security, instead of having it in say one company's database or one company that you have to attack to try to get to the data, you've got multiple threat vectors to have to attack. So in a cyber security sense, it is actually harder to try to attack something like this. And then finally, composability. If you're into open source, it is so much easier in this space. This is like open source with incentives. You can pick up and just pull together different uh, elements and create something new. And that's what we've done with stuff that we're doing at trade flows and other spaces. So composability is really key, but it's uh, worth looking at all of these.